Hi, I'm Mick from the Brisbane MDC shop. Today we're going to talk about your XT17T. T meaning tandem axle, okay? This is a pop top version. We're going to go through the ins and outs of your van so when you go away, you don't have any problems. To start our journey, we're going to talk about things that you do before you come and turn up to us to pick up your van. One is make sure that you've got a brake controller in your car. The brake controller will assist you in the, uh, your brakes on your van. Okay, with that, you need a 12 pin plug, which has got the bottom seven exactly the same as a normal flat seven. All right, but we have another wire going to the number 12 pin, which gives you power for your um, breakaway system. The other thing is your 50 amp Anderson plug, so that's five zero Anderson plug. So that's going to help you with your charging of your batteries. So you've got a full battery system when you get to where you're going. Also guys, you need to remove the tow ball off your car. As I say in that, your tongue needs to look like this when you turn up. Okay, so ball off. Okay, so we can attach our receiver that goes on the DO35 or polyblock, whichever, so therefore we can get you on the road. On hooking up from your, your van to your car, guys, we have a DO35 hitch. All the same on the XT range, okay? So basically it's just the pin that goes underneath it. Basically once you're over the top, with the jockey wheel you wind down as far as it goes as in like, once the jockey wheel becomes loose, all ball weight is here, push the red button. That means it's locked on, okay? So once this button is pushed and this little arc comes forward, that means it's locked on. To get it off, push the button down, push that back, release the button, and you open up the throat, and then you wind the jockey wheel off. But we're, we're hooking up at the moment, so button down, and then 12 pin plug, plug that in just there, secure it. Your Anderson plug, 50 amp, charging of the batteries, plug that in, and then chain. By law, you have to cross the chains, okay? So it's a, it does a support role for anything should happen. Okay, once you cross your chains, what it does, it acts as a cradle. So if anything should fail here, it falls into a cradle, so it supports the towing of the van. Obviously, you'll know it's coming off. Instead of if the chains were um, straight up and down to there, what it could happen is it could dig in, essentially flip on the car, and that's what we don't want. All right, so hence why you've got to cross your chains. Also, breakaway unit. Now, this must be attached to your chassis not to your chains, all right? Has to be to the chassis of your car. So, easiest part on this car is around this bar that's here. If your van comes detached from the car, this, your breakaway unit, on this wire, it pulls out, okay? And then it activates the electric brakes that are in there. So the brake comes on so it doesn't career around the road or anything. Comes on so you can push that back in, resets everything. And then jockey wheel up. So pull the pin, bring it up, make sure those pins go back in through here, handle up, handbrake off. You're done, you're ready to go. On your jockey wheel here, guys, every time you're taking it off from the car, be it camping, at home, whatever, what I would suggest is have the wheel running crossways across your van, not vertical with the van, but crossways of your van it seems to support your A-frame a lot better. But also, when you're reversing on, if you miss it a little bit, you're able to move on the wheel itself, not move the whole jockey wheel. So you're moving on the wheel first. So for safety reasons and so forth, and that, make sure you're, you're having your jockey wheel run across your van. On all your caravans, guys, you have four stabilizers, okay? Two at the front, two at the rear. All right, easy as take a bit of pressure off, pull the handle, pull them down so it's nice and vertical. Get your wind down bar, pop it in there. Wind her out. Now, remembering that this is a stabilizing unit for your van. This is not a jack. This is not a jacking point, all right? Your jacking points are here, all right, just in front of that. Basically, if you do get a flat tire and so forth, put these down for safety reasons. 
but these are stabilizers and stabilizers only for your van. When you're hooking up your gas, check your O-ring, just make sure it's all perfect. Put it in the space provided. Once you've got the proper seal on there, you'll go hook up the rest of your kitchen and then you'll come and turn on the gas. You've got your filling points, as in fill the tanks up, mains water pressure. So the one on the left is filling your water tanks. Right is mains water pressure. All right, just underneath that is your breather for when you're filling up your tanks. When hooking up the mains water, you've got to get a three quarter inch Nilex or Nita product to go in there so you can hook up to mains water. And then all your taps and everything would come live, but that's what you need to hook up to your mains water pressure. And this little bad boy, when you are hooked up to that, you can leave it closed and coming out of there. Everything underneath the, um, the van is all food grade. The poly tanks, the hoses, they're all food grade. So filling it up, do not use your garden hose. Go out to Bunnings and buy some food grade hose. The next one along is basically your shower. You got two nozzles in there, hot and cold. And obviously the hot will come on if you're using your hot water. And this is your little valve, basically for flow of water, okay? When you're not in use, just hang that up there. Then you've got your grey water. Now, a grey floor is from the shower and the sink inside, so therefore that's a flushing point. So you get the key, you open that up, you can flush that out. Stick your finger in there to get the right size hose that you're going to flush your grey water tank. Once your grey water is uh, full and so forth, it's just down under the rear. Okay, you'll see a tap, you can open up and you dump it, but this is when you want to flush it out, get a bit of bad smells out of there because it's been there for a while. Another little feature is a tap on the front end. You know, if you need to wash your hands, the little ones that have got dirty fingers or whatever want to wash their hands, once you've got your water pump on or plugged into mains water, right, this becomes activated. All right, so as simple as just turn and tap. And then here, you basically got two drawers and a little slide. We usually put a barbecue slide in there, but you can use it as whatever you like. Blue tabs down, pull out, by the handles, Go to the lock into place, blue tabs down, push back away. Now make sure you let the tabs go each time you're opening and closing, okay? Blue tabs down, bring it out, locks into place. These obviously fit whatever it fits. If it's too big, don't force it in there, okay? Blue tabs down, down and away. Just on the front door is another says they're washable. Don't put them in a washing machine, it's just running under a tap and shake them out and put them back. So you need to clean these every so often. So it basically goes on usage of van, all right? So every couple of months, just have a look if you use the van a lot, just shake them out, run some water over them, clean them out and put them back in. On all your locks in your, in your caravan, guys, is these ones here on the XT12. Basically what happens, it, when it pulls it into the um, seal on the inside, all right, it pulls it in as such, all right? When you're opening and closing, it has to be a medium lock, all right? So nothing, as you're pushing these down and so forth, so it's really, really tight, you don't want that. So you want it up to about 80%. If you push them too much, too hard, and trying to um, create a tighter seal, as in plus 90, you are going to break them. They're gonna break through there, all right? But if you need to readjust, all it is, that little nut there is a 10 mil um, nut. So it's gonna undo, quarter turn to maybe half a turn, all right? What it does is just pulls it inside here a little bit and just creates a little bit bigger seal on it. Pop these locks and you have a tunnel boot at the front of your van, all right? Again, whatever fits through that hole can fit. It's usually for your poles, your ensuite, anything like that small enough to go in there. If you really want to, you can throw your fishing rods in there, all right? But um, just storage, tunnel boot across. Same as on the other side. Okay, again, goes all the way through. A couple of little items in here. Your um, manual wind down bar for your electric awning. Um, your wind down bar for your stabilizers and your kitchen leg, support leg, is also tucked away in here as well. When opening your tunnel boot, guys, open her up, but close them off because when they come down, it'll scratch your paint job, chip your paint and so forth. So just close them up so you get a flat surface, but also when you're closing them back up, see it's gonna hit the top, open it up, close them off. On your XT range, guys, through your door, this key here that's got the rounded edges and such, a big silver one, you usually got two big silver ones. This one is your door, okay? So unlocking your door, key in, turn to the front, handle to the front, opens it up. 
On this particular model as well, when you do lock it, it's key in, handle to the back, turn it to the back, key back, it's locked. When you want to be locking it from inside, internally, the little silver knob that's here, just turn it, it's locked. Also, when you want to open the door from the inside, because you've got to move the door handle to the front, right, it's up the inside. Don't pull it down because you're just locking it again. Up and open. When you want to separate your door, there's a little black lever here. You push up, it unlocks it, and the door separated. When you want to click it back together, you grab the top, click, bottom, click, it's all back together. And this is how you operate the steps. So basically, just pull out and lock it into place. And when you want to put it away, slightly lift and just push. On all your vans, guys, you have recovery points. Now, these, are, these recovery points are rated to three and three quarter ton. All right, so therefore, basically, what you've got to do is unhook from your car and hook up to these for safety purposes, because some good Samaritan might come up behind you, want to drag you out, and these can actually get ripped out because you're trying to snatch too much out of there. All right, so basically, unhook from your car, recovery points, we'll pull you out, not a problem. So to get to your toilet, obviously you unlock it, top button, bottom button, opens up. To fill, you need to just pop that down ever so slightly, bring that out, undo the top, water in there, fills up a little reservoir, right, and the water level comes up here on the side, so you know when it's full and when it's empty. Also, once it's full, you put the cap on, just pull it down ever so slightly, and replace it back under there, so just swing it back away. Okay, so also when you're taking the unit out, it's just a little green level down the bottom, a little um, hatch. Basically lift that up and slide that out. You'll hear the unit itself closing this back up, right? because it's a level inside that basically just closes that back up. When you pull that out, hit that button, depressurize, put the wheels down on the ground, pop the handle down, it extends. All you do is go on for a walk. Once you get to your dump point, obviously nozzle up, unscrew the top, comes out. You actually physically got to pick it up and turn it upside down to get all the gear out. Once you've done that, place it back on the ground, lid back on, turn it away, pop the handle again and go for another walk, come back to your van. So the chemicals as we go in here, guys, this is a little measuring cup. So once you've done all the chemical things, guys, basically pick it back up, and slide it back home. Okay, so for your electrics, pop your latches, close them back up, and you put up the top. Main switch, kill switch, whatever you like to call it, turn that on. Individually, turn every bit and piece on. Right, it's something that you're gonna use. So you're gonna use DC outlets if you wanna plug anything in. Um, your roof vents, your stereo. So the things that you want to turn on, turn them on there. Also on here, if something's not working with your electrics, turn them off, there's a little fuse in there. So basically hit it twice to reset, turn it back on. If there's any failures, there's a little ceramic fuse inside. Little needle nose pliers, basically take them out, have a look, see what size is and just replace. With your electrical panel guys, this is how many uh, volts you have in your battery system. Over here you have a key, all right? 13 volts is full, your full battery power. So basically with an AGM battery, you've got to keep them topped up all the time. So you don't want it to get down to 12, two or below. Okay, so because an AGM battery, if you start losing power down to here, you're gonna drop some cells, you're gonna drop battery. Just remember you keep this in mind. There's still maintenance on your van. Electrics is part of the maintenance. Your power source on the outside of your van is 15 amp. So when you get a 15 amp lead, you can plug it into the front, so you got 240 in. That comes in handy, one, if you want to top up your batteries, and two, if you've got aircon, you have to be running on at least a 3 kVA or 240. And don't forget, when you're plugged in here, it's only when those uh, 10 amp poles inside that they come alive. Also, when you're plugged into 240, guys, don't have your um, extension cord coiled really tight. It's got to have a little bit of space about it. So, meter, meter and a half, 
as in loop-wise, the RCD units will trip out and such, by, so long loops. Now, whilst at home, if you haven't got a 15 amp at home and you need to charge it, go to Bunnings and buy yourself an adapter. It's called an amphibian adapter from 10 to 15 because you must maintain your batteries in your van. Okay, with any electrical problems, guys, what you need to do is come in and check your RCD unit. All right, see if it's tripped out. So if any faults come through, come and check this little unit first. Just a quick summary on your electrics, on your projector electrics in your, in your vans, okay? It's just at the back of your fridge slide. At the top, you've got your modified inverter, 1000 watt, your DC to DC charger, and your 240 charger. Okay, so your 240 charger, obviously here you've got a switch that turns it on. And this is where you can relate to. It goes through your battery type and so forth. Just at the top there, it's all calcium, gel, AGM, and so and wet battery. So therefore, if you do want to change out the batteries, you get onto that setting. So basically you can choose what's going on in there. Your IDC25, DC, DC charger, obviously that relates to solar and so forth. Charging light, that'll be green. That means it's working. That's working off the solar. And then also if it goes to the alternator, which is off your car. Okay, so if that flash is red, you mean, you know, there's a little bit of a problem. If it's flashing green at the top, you know she's working fine. And obviously your 1000 watt modified inverter, you got to turn that on when you need to, when you want to use it, because what the inverter does, it converts all your battery energy to 240 energy. That's why you've got to plug into here. That's why in any van, if you've got 10 amp poles inside, basically they do not come alive until you're plugged into 240. This changes the 12 volt to 240 so you can plug things in. So this is a thousand watt modified. So basically anything that you want to run, you check on the back of any unit. If it runs more than a thousand watts, well, you can't use it. If it's under that, you're going to be fine. You also have a master switch, that's here. Um, if that little lever there is popped out like that, that means things are, have tripped out, you pop that back up. All right, that's one of your master switches. And also you've got, just in there, you've got all these circuits where um, positive and negative come onto there. Um, there's a little button on the inside of here, so that's how you reset everything, okay? So you just push that button back in just to make sure it's all working fine. This is where your kitchen's located. Pop this open, we'll have a look. Secondary lock, come up, blue tab down, let the blue tab go, pull by the handle, bring it out, and making sure you lock it into place. Flip her over, there's a little lug that goes into a little hole on this side, make sure it's all nice and even. Each one of these has got a little latch on it so they don't fall down when once driving. Glass tops pop up. Your kitchen leg is in your tunnel boot at the front. Grab that out, find where the hole is, pop that up. All right, support, lock it off so you've got a nice flat surface to work with. Wastewater, just under here, there's a black hose that comes out, goes straight into a bucket. Your gas line, it comes out the same hole. Don't yank it too much, just make sure it can reach the gas bayonet out of the other side. Once you grab your gas line, um, put it in, bayonet, push in, turn to the right, that's it, done. Then go turn your gas bottle on at the front. Okay, guys, lighting your poor burner stove here. Turn the element on, light her up, hold it on for a few seconds. Four, five, it's true, it's burning. So when you want to turn it off as well, guys, if you're not going to use it constantly, uh, okay, go turn your gas ball off the front and let it run through, let it bleed, so there's no gas in the line. But remembering this, when you do do this, so you're gonna close the lid, still do not close this for another half an hour after this has cooled down. See the flame's gone out now? Now I won't close it now, I'll leave it go for about half an hour, all right, and then I'll close it because all this will be really hot still and can crack or shatter this. Now, I'm packing your kitchen away. Make sure your tap's down, close your top for your sink, your drain hose for your sink, you just 
underneath and you pop it back up through the hole that's there. Make sure you've bled all your gas line as well. There's no gas in there and you push this one away. All right, so once you pull the gas lines through, close each drawer, latches down. Close the drawer, latches down. Your extended table bench, you fold over the top, fold the brackets in, bungee cord down, leg off, undo, drop down, blue handle down, and start to push away. Let the blue handle go. Push in, make sure it's locked, secondary lock on there, close her away. This is where your fridge slide is, okay? So, undo there, hold them back, bungee cord, so holds it open, blue tab down, pull your fridge out. Now, this perf is built for an 80 angle. So, de-shackle there, de-shackle at the back, so you can strap it down. So, on your fridge slide, you can go through the handle, pop that through there, obviously shorten it. Basically, that's just to tie it off, so you don't have any excess anywhere. So once you've done that, obviously all your tie down points are done. So front and back, all right? So it's nice and secure. So when you're going along the road, it's secured. So you won't have any problems with your fridge bouncing around anywhere. On your fridge slide, you have a 12 volt socket and you have an Anderson plug socket. So this is plugged into 12 volt, just down here. Plug it in, happy days. All you do is down and slide her away. Just mentioning about the fridge slide as well, guys. Yes, your kill switch, main switch, must be turned on, and also your fridge on there, or else it doesn't complete the circuit, so you will not get power to your fridge, so therefore you will have hot beer, milk, meat, and such. So when you wanna operate your electric awning, what do you do is you gotta come to the front panel on your main switch, All right, you gotta turn it on, awning on. Your button to open and close your electric awning is actually in your kitchen slide. So just here, open, push the button, and she starts coming out. When it's coming out, if any wind is hitting you in the face, be safety conscious and just hold your awning, okay? Because what you don't want is a massive gust coming and ripping this clean off your arm um, caravan, all right? So two or three fingers on here. You don't have to have any pressure on it. All right, it's just there just in case. And while you're all holding on to it, guys, what you don't have to do is you don't have to run over and hit the kill, um, stop button. When it gets out to a certain point, it will stop automatically. So retrieving your legs. Pop one end, slide your hand along, pop the other end, straight down. And I find it the easiest way is to stay on the inside of it, okay? Undo that, you can use that as a slide to slide it out. All right, extend it down to here. The bottom goes in, slip that back down. And once you get to the desired level, the inside one, you just tighten her up and lock her into place. With your electric awning, you've got two options for your legs, okay? So when you do pop it off, if you do not want to go back to the van, undo, straight down, you peg it to the ground. These two little duvel lackeys, all right? One is your manual override for electric awning, right? And this is your adjusting tool. So basically, if you pull out these wires or something happens where you can't use the electrics on your electric awning, this is your manual override. Basically, it just goes up inside here, and you wind this. And then if something did happen, it comes in wrong, if it gets thrown about on the wind or something, this is your manual override for your adjusting tool. And they sit side by side like that, up inside the cradle in here. Okay, obviously guys, you've got to unpeg. You loosen off here, that slides back up. All right, have your right hand up here as you're pushing that in as you swing it up. So it slips in there. Make sure that this is square here. So it folds in nice and flush. Pop that lid. All right, it comes out, you slide that up. You lock it off, swing that up, make sure that that's flat at that end, clips in. And then you come over here, you got open and close, so therefore you just push the button close and it comes in.
to extend your mattress, right? You've first got to drop the wheels and extend your van. Okay, so to drop your wheels, you got over center catches. Two at the top and one pin at the bottom. So basically you got to take your gold clip out, over center catch, off there, do the other one, and then take your pin out and leave it on the bar and drop it down. Simple as that, two gas struts. Now, these are 55 kilo wheel and tire. Right, two gas struts equate to about 18 kilos, so very light. Put your gold pins back in where you got them from, and then you just repeat on that side. Simple. So there's another advantage of this too, guys, that if you are small in stature, once you drop your wheel down, you can use that as a lever to get up to undo your over center catches up here. And once you've done that, basically it is to unlock here. So the little black key that you got, you start to unlock. Once you've unlocked it all, come to the center, you lift it up, hold it up with one hand because this one doesn't have gas struts. Barrel bolt here, undo that, swing it open, rest it on there, that's fine. All right, other barrel bolt, swing that out, it's resting on there. That has got to come down to make your base. You got two locks up in the corner, okay? Again, if you're small in stature, you can use the tires, unlock. Just remember when you're walking from tire to tire, if it is wet, it may be a little bit slippery. So definitely be careful, all right? Take the weight, let it come down. Handle, pull up. It's got a slight little gas strut in there, all right? Let's give it a flick. So they come forward, the over catches. over center catch goes on, pull. and tap the corners to make sure they're in the corner. Done. Since we've opened up the back and we've popped the back latches to pop the roof, now we've got to come around the front and pop the roof here. All right, there's an easy way to do it. On this particular model, you can have your foot there, hand inside here as a brace, step up, over center catch, off, gold clip back on. So once you're down, you do exactly the same thing on the other side. And then you can go inside and pop the roof. So when you come into the door, guys, you got the handle, one on there, one on the roof, and push up. Once that one's up, you turn around and come and do it to the back one. And once you push it into place, there's a little silver latch here, and just locks it in. So when you come in, you've set up the back, and this is when you're gonna fold out your mattress, guys. So you just push it away, step up, grab it, Keep pushing it away with your leg, push it out, then unfold it. This particular one is XT17. It does have internal fridge, internal cooking, dinette, bunk, internal shower, ensuite, so it sleeps full. You've got to sink in internally, so just remember, once you turn on your trim hot water system, you've got hot and cold running water in here. Okay, when you want to put it away, drop that down, close the lid, and then it becomes bench space, prep space. Just next to that is your uh, Thetford stove and oven. All right, three burner on top, little oven and grill underneath. Okay, guys, lighting your three burner. Basically push the knob in, turn it for gas. Obviously the gas has got to be turned on at the front. Ignite, gas will come on. Leave it on there for at least five to 10 seconds. Let go and it'll stay lit. In your Thetford burner, there's also an oven. So therefore when you've got a little baking tray and stuff in here, little handle on there so you don't get burnt when you pop that in there. When you are cooking inside, you must remove this. Okay, so that's got to come off when you are cooking inside. Obviously, when you, before you go on your journeys, you pop it back on. But when you are cooking inside, you're supposed to take that pad off. All right, ventilation. Okay, guys, it's also a good idea, same as your external burners, do not close the glass lid until it's really cool down. Don't close it when it's flame about, and don't close it when it's hot. Make sure it's at least half an hour before you close any of these glass tops. You've got a, a Vitrofigo fridge. It's 150 litres, 
it's split so it's got two it's got two separate doors so basically open up here there's your bottom and top as in freezer your electrical panel at the front all right it's got two fridge switches the one on the left is your external fridge the one on the right is your internal fridge all right so whether or not you have them both going at the same time but realistically traveling you must have them on all the time where you find your batteries is under this little latch hatch here so you got the three batteries underneath there it's covered by a board there's a couple of grub screws either end uh, so you need to take that out to access the batteries just beside of this is where all your water capacity stuff is, is kept so you trim a hot water system your inlet valve so you're filling up your tanks and then your water pump is here just on the wheel arch so also with this when you want to light your hot water system okay this is your little panel here so obviously gas on and so forth and then you just flick her up but you still got to have it turned on at the front again with all the electrics and anything that needs a 12 volt spark and such right you need to turn it on at the front or else your gas ain't gonna light once you've turned your trim or hot water system on inside this is your exhaust open this up now it shows you how to take this off basically push your thumbs in it splits the top it comes off so you must release this as soon as you turn your hot water system on so once you've lit your hot water system and you've taken your cover off what I would ask you to do guys is basically come and check it at two minutes and eight minutes come and check with the back of your hand if heat's coming out or good if it's not coming out redo it because basically with the lines that aren't purged properly it'll light because air airblock in behind it it's going to go out so you might have to go and do it two or three or four times so the air, um, air comes out of it and the gas comes through the lines also on your 17c once you come inside the van just past the kitchen on the front wall your water gauge is here so then you've got your remote for your projector unit uh, and then you've got usb and 12 volts and then you've got double pole 10 amp inside and that only works when you're plugged into 240 okay on your 17c it's got a dyna and bunk or a double bunk now but on the top bunk what you've got to do is you've got to remove the mattress pull this pin out this pin here and the little rail so the little ones can't fall out and obviously pop that back in there as such so you can have this as a bunk double bunk or if you want to there's a bungee cord here that just holds in position you must release the bungee you push this out of the way and then this becomes a dinette down here so you just raise the table up okay so but when you're packing this away again this has got to come out right, the pin's got to come out that rail has to be tucked underneath the cushion because when you pull that roof down it ha everything has to be below this height here all right so when it pulls down you're not going to damage the roof or damage anything else that's in the van so if you want to collapse this basically you've got to just break legs and so forth in here lift that up pop that back down there you can pull that back down because your, your bunk that's your internal and there you go you've got your two bunks with the internal windows guys it's got little gray buttons there you must push that button in and move the handle push the button in and move the handle please don't just yank on it because you'll break the internal lock all right the window itself goes out to three positions all right once you hear the click stop you go too far you release it it'll come back in all right so therefore we go out to do that i released it once you feel a click stop i want to release it bring it back in all right you'll hear that click well you know it's locked back into place also when you close and guys there is two little latches in here where you can go into the center or go completely on the inside of it all right if you go into the center it leaves a little gap for ventilation all right so at night time if you want a little bit of air fine but when you're traveling it's got to be on the inside one the internal one or else you're just going to fill up with dust 
Also, with your window, you have a fly screen. It comes down and you have a privacy screen that comes up, which you can go half and half if you wish. Just clip them together as such. All right, separate. Just go slowly. Don't be in a rush. If you're on holidays, you don't need to be in a rush. Just push them away slowly. That's all you need to do. With your shower hatch, guys, what it is, you got a little button on here, turns the light on, you got a little swivel. So just turning off that, opens up the hatch. You got a neutral switch in there, you've got an external fan that takes that out, or you've got a one that blows in. All right, so you can just have it any way you want. Above your main sleeping area, you have a hatch in your roof. Basically, it's got the same tabs as the windows. So basically, you've still got a button, you've still got to push it on both sides. You've got a handle that swings down and then you can open it up and push it up. There's only one setting, it's either opened or closed on this one. You have got privacy and also fly screen. You can do a 50-50 if you like. But what I will warn you against is when it's closed up and you're not using it, okay, and you have your blind across, what it does, it builds up a lot of heat, a lot of hot air in between the two surfaces. So what I will tell you to do is not have that closed up. I wanna let the air come through, not with the hatch open, but so it circulates a little bit more. So you have a 40 degree day in between those two areas, it can go up to 70, 75 degrees, all right? So just make sure that that's open so that filtrates through so you don't get any warping of these two units. So with your aircon, it is only run on 240 or at least a two and a half KVA Jenny. So you have to be plugged into the 240 outside to run your air. It will not run off your battery system. In each one of the vans, they come with a smoke alarm. So that's compulsory, you have to come with a smoke alarm, but it's up to you as the individual to make sure you change your batteries out. All right, so yes, it comes with a smoke alarm, but you have to change it out. It's placed in certain places in the roof, all right? Each van is a different spot, but you'll have a smoke alarm in every van. Also in each van, guys, I mean, one of the drawers, there'll be a little booklet, all right? Each booklet will contain whatever the van has got, be it hot water system, diesel, air cons, radios, blah, blah, blah. There's a little satchel here. It's got everything in there, so just have a read up of it. All right, and then if you need to, you go to your user's manual and your troubleshoot and so forth from there. On your caravans, guys, it doesn't really matter if it's a 12, 14, 15 or whichever, your tire pressures and your wheels and everything is all part about being maintenance, right? So therefore, you've got to make sure you maintain everything. Each van has its own manual that you can download. So you can get the checklist off there and go through it so that you, so you know what you've got to do at any particular time. Okay, your wheel pressures, all right? I always say, whatever you're running on the end of your car, so it might be 40. You may have to go up to 45, you may have to go up to 50, 55, depending how you weigh your van. If there's too much weight in the back of it, you might have to up your pressures in your tire. Basically, you just got to maintain your tire pressures at all times. You go on the beach, you drop them to a point, when you come back on the bitumen, you'll take it up, all right? Also, your wheel studs, 14 mil wheel studs, they're the biggest ones on the market. You've got to keep tension on them. We supply with wheel brace, so basically it's making sure it's taut, but not ridiculously like jumping on the wrench itself. So make sure it's tight, and you've got to check it uh, at 50, 150, 500. But also, you've got to check it every day once you're traveling. If you're going on corrugations for two or three or four days, you check it every morning. It's about a safety thing. On every one of the vans, you have a plaque on the drawer bar that shows you how to do your wheel nuts up. So it's on a star pattern, okay? You don't go around any clockwise or clockwise, whichever. It's a star pattern, so it goes on evenly. Bearings, all right? If you do any salt water, beach work, anything like that, check them more regularly than 5,000, 10,000, okay? It's common sense on all of this maintenance through your vans. It doesn't matter if it's a 12 up to a 22. It's make sure you do the maintenance. So on conclusion on the XT17T, all right? Basically, 
If you have any problems, go to your user manual, okay? There's always something in there that you can refer to. Let's get out there and make some memories. Our teamwork at MDC makes the dream work. Escape with confidence. Let's get out there.